Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is the category of waves, and we want to know what are the various ways of categorizing waves, and how do these categories differ from one another. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the nature of a wave. An emphasis was placed upon distinguishing between the particle motion and the wave motion. I left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. The point is that when a wave moves through a medium, the particles of the medium vibrate about a fixed position. This results in the formation of some sort of wave pattern. And we observe that, that wave pattern moves from one location to another. As you see in this animation, the first particle of the medium is being vibrated up and down. Every particle in the medium thus vibrates up and down. This is what we mean by particle motion. But you also see a sine wave with a series of crests and troughs. And these crests and troughs move from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. This is what we mean by wave motion. As we begin to categorize waves, we'll give particular attention to how the direction of particle motion compares to the direction of wave motion. One category of waves is a transverse wave. When a transverse wave exists within a medium, the particles of the medium vibrate in a direction that is perpendicular to the direction that the wave moves. In this animation, the three dots represent three of the many particles in the medium. And you'll notice each one is vibrating up and down vertically about its fixed position. But the pattern of crests and troughs is moving from the left to the right. The direction of wave motion is perpendicular to the direction of the particle motion. When particles move in this manner, a series of crests and troughs are produced within the pattern. The crests are the high points denoted by the letter C, and the troughs are the low points denoted by the letter T. A second category of waves is known as the longitudinal wave. When a longitudinal wave exists within a medium, the particles of the medium vibrate back and forth in a direction that is parallel and anti-parallel to the direction that the wave moves. In this animation, you'll see three red dots, which represent three of the many particles of the medium. If you focus on one of the red dots and look which way the particles are moving, you'll notice that they're vibrating horizontally from left to right and right to left as the wave moves from the left end of the medium to the right end of the medium. This is a case of a longitudinal wave with the particle motion parallel and anti-parallel to the direction of wave motion. If you had a slinky that was stretched out horizontally and you wish to introduce a longitudinal wave into it, you take the first coil of the slinky and push it forward and pull it back, push it forward and pull it back, moving it horizontally. Every coil within the slinky would vibrate back and forth horizontally as the wave moves from the left end of the slinky to the right end of the slinky. The particle motion is parallel to the direction of the wave motion. There's no crests and troughs in this diagram. Instead, there's points where the, com where the coils are compressed together very tightly and other areas where they're spread apart very tightly. We refer to these points of maximum coil density as compressions and the points of minimum coil density as the rarefactions. They're noted as the C and the R in the diagram you see here. Longitudinal and transverse waves are the two most common wave categories discussed in a typical first year physics course. But there's other categories at least worth mentioning, like surface waves. A water wave is a surface wave because the particles on the surface of the water undergo a cyclic vibration. If you watch this animation and focus on the blue particles, can you tell which way they're vibrating? Well, it's not horizontally and it's not vertically, but rather it's in a circle back and forth over and over again. In fact, not only do particles on the surface vibrate in this manner, but to a lesser degree, particles below the surface do the same thing. This is referred to as a surface wave. Many physics labs have a wave machine that consists of a collection of steel rods that are resting upon a horizontal support. You can introduce a pulse into one of the ends and watch it travel back and forth in a manner as shown here, and this is what we would call a torsional wave. Thus far, we've been categorizing waves based upon observations of how the direction of particle motion compares to the direction of wave motion. But it's not the only way to categorize waves. We can categorize waves as being either mechanical waves or electromagnetic waves. A mechanical wave is a wave that requires some sort of physical material or medium in order to exist. Stadium waves, water waves, sound waves, 
slinky waves, waves in a rope, these are all examples of mechanical waves. You can't have a slinky wave unless you have a slinky, and you can't have a water wave unless you have water, and you can't have a stadium wave unless you have fans in the stadium. These types of waves require some sort of material or medium in order to exist. That's in contrast with electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves can travel through a medium, but they also can travel through a vacuum, a region void of matter. Matter. Electromagnetic waves get their names because there's a fluctuating electrical and magnetic field that fluctuates over the course of time and through space. Electromagnetic waves will be the topic of several videos in our video tutorial series on light waves and color. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website any one of which would be good next steps. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have an interactive simulation, a Minds on Physics mission, and a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.